Cal Pelly, look, small town big haters, four pound lift layers, spit slayers, take respect, got the payback, clap, lay the rest, I'ma count dollars till it's making sense, I abuse whole crews like Jada Kiss, try me, these bad bitches like me, girl talk to me spicy, she might be wifey, shiesty, like poop clap in the big phone, watch me, I'ma show you how to dance in the end zone, JGP, I move like a boss, who would've thought, suitors came through in the Porsche and blew his shit off, rest in peace though, we should've let his heat blow, switch you get fucking with Pellegrino, it's hard being Mike, I'm in the world of Tito's You hey. suck and salivate, marinate Flow slow like a satin out of shape Carry away, life for one Just snipe and scorch you Tell me walks on the beat like Christ on water Come on Yes, 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 indeed Here we are on the road again TTS bringing you another special episode We stopped in here at Staten Island You got KP, myself, and Wanna introduce yourself? Yeah, Jojo Pellegrino, man. Standing on his own. Shout out to stuff. What's up with you, man? How you doing today, man? Doing good, man. Thanks. Thanks for pleasure having me. Pleasure, you know, having you out here, taking the time out, you know what Definitely. I mean, out of your busy day. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me, man. So, let's dive right in. What's, what was it like as a child out here in Staten Island? Um, It was nice, man. You know, building forts, running around, riding bikes, climbing trees, playing wiffle ball, you know, you know, uh... Taking the man's test, all these little things that, you know, obstacles, you jump over that barbed wire fence, break that window, you know, all these little stupid things. Being a little adventurous. Yeah, a little bully and stuff, you know, a little, <laughs> you know, fist fights when you were a kid, all that stuff, you know, uh, manhunt games, all that stuff. Childhood was like that. Yeah. Got both parents, blessed, loving parents. Uh, both played a major role in, uh, in who I am, not just as a person, but as an artist. Uh, supportive parents, open-minded parents. No, not like everybody else in, in my neighborhood. Uh, but my childhood, basically, yeah. Where was your childhood at? Where did that apartment? Staten Island, in Great Kills, in Staten Island, New York. Okay. Uh, predominantly Italian neighborhood, Irish neighborhood. You know, uh, back in the days when I was a kid, uh, wasn't really no hip hop scene out there. Uh, wasn't at all no hip hop scene. Wasn't nobody listening to it. A couple people listening to Rock Him, you know, some of the older dudes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah, but during my childhood, I'm talking like, you know, before 10, 11 years old. None of that. Just all that, just just all that, you know, suburban fun that the, that the kids do. You know what I'm saying? So you, you did you grow up in the projects or did you have nah, like I a, grew, I, nah, I grew up a grew nice up, nice yeah. rural area. I grew up I grew up in, in on the South Shore of Staten Island. You know, middle class people, people that uh, a lot of people live check to check. My parents are are, are not well off, but they're hardworking people. Uh, you know, uh, and they provided. My father was always working when I was a kid. You know, they worked numerous jobs each. My mother put herself through school. You know, and uh, you know. Nobody's rich or nothing like that, but a lot of the kids in the neighborhood were. Um, I just had different interests as well as them. The rest what, of them. What was your What was your interest? Well, my mother was a teacher in the Brooklyn area. You know what I mean. Um, my mother worked with a lot of the kids uh, from the projects and stuff like that. So at our house, and uh, unlike a lot of the other people in my neighborhood, my parents, you know, they don't see color. You know, so uh, at my house, you know, in the summertime, my mother would have all her friends from work come over. So now in my backyard, we got a, black, a, a whole backyard full of black people, full of Spanish people, having a good time, different music. My mother always loved soul music, and uh, I just grew up different than a lot of the kids in my neighborhood. I was exposed to different things than, than they were. You know what I mean? That's a beautiful thing. Not a lot of people had that growing up, you know. Yeah, I had that. Now we talking, we talking when I was a little boy. This is before teenage years. This is, this is you know, up to 10, 11 years old. You know, around 11, 12 years old, I, you know, I was exposed to, to hip-hop in a serious way, and uh, I just I caught them. I caught, I caught it right there. You know what I mean? So how, what was that like? I mean, be, growing up in that area and then you see everything evolving over here because you're, you're a Wu affiliate, correct? You, you... Um, I didn't start like that. No, I didn't start like that. I'm, I'm from the South Shore. Nobody would even dare try to rap. There was no rappers. There was a couple rappers, but, you know, they, you know whatever. They were, they, they, were, they were like on some like rock and roll shit. You know what I mean? Um, me personally, what was it like? Hmm. It just... It, 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 it's what I wanted to do, bro. It's just something way different. You know what I mean? As soon as, as soon as I heard it, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just like, you know, the exposure to it. Like, my mother would take me, you know, to the supermarket. And I never wanted to go in. You know what I mean? So my mother loves all sorts of music. So I was exposed to, to everything else. But hip-hop itself, I would go to that station when she would go in the, in the supermarket. And listen, as my mother started putting herself through school, I started, you know, going to my grandmother's house, Pellegrino. You know, she lives over by the West Brighton Projects. Now I'm 13, 14, 15 years old. Now I want to go outside and sneak down. So 14, right around there, boom, West Brighton Projects, hooked. That was it. I, I, I went, um, did what I had to do, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just, just wanted to be around. I had a couple friends that I met from the neighborhood. And, I, you know, I went to go mess with them. And um, 
you know, man, just we just start having fun, making music, doing all the things the kids in the projects do, having fun with them. You know, and, and at first, you know, uh, a lot of people didn't want me around, but, you know, we did our thing, man. You know, they had their little crew and all that, and they jump you into the crew and shit like that. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I did that when I was a kid. I did course, that a couple yeah. different times, you know, where it's like, you know, just body shots for 30 seconds yeah. or whatever. But, um, yeah, I did my thing, you know, because they wasn't trying to let nobody just hang around. You know what I'm saying? So I uh, kind of started there, man, right then and there, you know. So uh, just immediately I just wanted to be I wanted to be a rapper. I started going into the studio. Cousin were you mine. a writer? Were you a freestyle? Nah, were you? I, would, I, would, I would just... I would just start saying shit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna front, bro. The first rhyme I wrote was was, was, was something else, you know what I mean? I was, I was very into this, you know what I mean? And um, had a cousin that came home from doing uh, state biz, Uncle Frankie or whatever. And, um, you know, he was rooted in the same, he was, he, 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 let's put it this way. He did a lot of stuff in the projects too. He knew I wanted to rap and he took me into the studio. So at 14 years old, I went to the studio, I recorded at Anthony Acid's house, uh, jumped on a record with this Taino tribe guys. And, uh, and the first time I went into the vocal booth, um, it got pressed the vinyl and right to the radio, my very first time. So, you know, Uncle Frankie brought me into the studio. And then from there, I just keep going and keep going. I made a demo tape. You know, my mother and father see that I'm doing this. They hear the music and stuff like that. And my father says, yo, I got this guy I'm very close with at work. He manages somebody that raps, you know, from the other side of the island. I'm like, all right. So now I'm like, I don't know, 15 years old. Dude's name is Wiggs, Thomas Wilson. He's like, he's gonna come over with his artists, come over to the house and listen to your stuff. When he came through, he came through with Shaheen. Mm. So he was managing the rugged child. Um, you know, long story short, they come in the house, they listen to the music, and Wiggs is like, yo, you got it, but you just got to go where the music is at. I know you're running around West Brighton rapping with them kids, but you got to come to Stapleton, man. That's, this is where it's really at. So uh, from there, that was it, bro. I was on the bus every day going out there. Man. Just, every just day. chopping up buildings. Just chopping it up, rapping, doing the things that they were doing in the hood, having fun, chilling out, you know. Um, you know, not taking myself too serious, but running around making a name for myself, rapping, man, and taking me on the boat, you know, battling for money, go to Battery Park, and, you know, they would tell me, take your hat off and look like a white boy until the last minute, then put your hat on, then get him, you know, all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I was spoiled because hanging around Shaheem is such a, you know, very, like, uh, personal, just, just, you know, we were together, you know, Sha was popping. We were together a lot. Just every day I would go and get with him and run around and learn the ropes and be around him and stuff like that, and I really appreciate him for that. But uh, I was spoiled, man. I got to uh, be around some of you know, the most legendary hip hop producers and artists before I even, you know, before before I even really embarked on making my own stuff, you know, like my own stuff to try to get a deal. Um, but that's pretty much, you know, how I started in the hip hop thing. So would you say writing and all that was one of your favorite subjects in school, or? Nah, I didn't. I didn't, really, really, I, I, I didn't like school, man. I, I liked going there. You knew I, what you wanted, and that was. I, I wanted to be. A, I mean, really, I wanted to be a ninja, <laughs> and then from that, I wanted to be. Uh, I wanted to be a rapper. So Bruce Lee came down, Ice T went up, and you know, and sometimes I don't know. I don't. I don't live with regrets, but sometimes, sometimes I wish I would have took my time. Man. I dedicated my whole life to this to this rap shit. You know what I mean? Uh, gave gave every drop of my energy to this rap thing drop of love and, and focus I got, I could pretty much guarantee, I put. I don't care who he is out there, man. And, and the real no, I put more time into this shit, man. Might be more than anybody, man. A lot of people fail to realize this industry here could create it, you know what I mean? If somebody really wants it, you know, some people don't make it, you know what I mean? Some, and they put all that time and that de dedication <laughs> into that. And it's, it's, it's a shame because, not saying that, you know what I mean? Yeah, obviously they didn't have it, but yeah. for to see somebody to drive that hard, it's not like it's, it's it's like it's not like any other business, but it's like any other business. There's first, there's, there's, there's steps, there's 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 things that need to be done in order to be successful. At least put yourself on that launcher pad. Me, I went in and started you know working on my my demo tape and D and D around all my favorite rappers and producers from Primo all the way down to Nas. I'm around these dudes every day now. Now I'm 18, 19. I'm recording all my stuff, this and that. DJ Scribbles asked me to be on his album. I went out to Cancun, you know, I stayed out there 40 days hosting all the, the, the parties, the Jerry Springer parties and the MTV parties and the shows and Jay-Z and all them in there. And I made a name for myself, man. It just felt like that whole damn trip was about me, man. People were talking about me. Scribbles put the thing out. They started playing it on the radio. And before I got home, every single major label, every major label, not just one or two of them, all of them were all fighting over me. Mm. Yeah, minimal thing, $500,000. People fighting, trying to do it. Came home to a bidding war. Um, I had a production company, it was Giz from Audio 2, was in that, my man Kalodro, uh, and Wiggs, which was Shaheem's manager. Uh, you know, um, I, you know the, Kalodro and I, we were making all the music together. So when we came home, it was our music uh, that, that the labels were fighting over. Um, I decided to go with, uh, well, let me just say like this, okay? 
So you see, my father brought wigs to the house, right? See how that happened, right? Now, now I'm with Shaheen, I'm running around Stapleton. Now it's years later. Now, all these people throwing their, 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 their deals on the table, all these people coming at me, yo, we wanna do this, we wanna do that, we wanna do this. Giz is telling me, yo, I got Sylvia Rome, she wants to do this. Wigs is saying, yo, we got people in Interscope, they wanna do this. Everyone's saying what they wanna do. And then my mother tells me, why don't you go meet with Trip, this girl that she works with? She got a lot of ties in Marcy and all that. Trip was a rapper, she working with Lauren Hill and all that stuff. Shout out Trip. So my mother's like, go, go see her. I don't need to go see nobody. I got all these record labels. They all want me. But go see her. So I go see Trip. Trip's like, yo, let me take you to Marcy. You know what I mean? All right. Brings me out to Marcy, Big Daddy Kane, whatever the case is, which is kind of crazy because Kane was around Shaheem early in the days. He knew me as Joey Swift. He used to call my crib looking for Shaheem and all that. It's kind of bugged out because I found a little tape that go in the answer machine recently and it's yeah, got all the messages from Big Daddy Kane all over my mother's answer machine looking for Shaheem and shit. You know, but, um, you know, so so Kane is, is chopping it up with her. He's like, yo, bring bring him to Eric Nix. So Eric Nix was was, you know, he 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 brought Foxy into the game. He was managing LL Cool J at the time for Chris Laddie over at Violia. Um so Trip said, Yeah, let, let's let's play it for Eric. We went into Eric. Um once I, I seen the energy in Violator and met Chris Laddie and Eric, I, I you know, I wanted to do that. And I'm glad that they wanted to do it as well. So so out of all the uh the recording contracts that were on the table, I went with Violator, I went with Chris Laddie. And now, I, what was that like? You know, I came through my I mean, mother. Was, it was a dream come true. It wasn't even reality, bro. I wasn't even touching the ground. I went from I went from being you know a, a lyricist in the street that everyone you know was 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 you know talking about in the mixtapes and all that to to literally just driving around with Nori, you know, drink you know we drinking, hanging out. I'm with Busta. I'm with I'm with LL Cool J, eating food every other day. I'm with, I'm around all the elite. My you know my first sessions. You know I'm I'm working with um I'm in the studio with Dr. Dre and and, and Cali for for forty something days. You know I'm. I'm working with um, uh, at Just Blaze, and I'm staying in Jay Z's studio with Jay Z hanging out with me, recording and all that. And I'm watching Kanye West formulate. I, I got to be around everything, man. Everything that was popping from what I consider to be the golden era. Um, I, I got around all that through Chris Lighty, you know, um, through that through that situation. So it, it felt like a dream, bro. In fact, you know, I might have took a lot of it for granted. You know, I was young and crazy and all that. I remember a couple times being at parties and, and it, it just wasn't realistic, bro. Like the rooms I was in with the people we were in and what was going on, it was just, I, most people wouldn't even believe it. And I remember just feeling like I was on cloud nine, just feeling myself. And I remember Wiggs, Tommy Wilson, you know, Shaheem's manager, he leaned forward in my ear, he said, you see all this? I said, yeah, this is crazy. He said, none of this is real, you know? And then, you know, as things, you know, don't necessarily, not everything pans out the way it's supposed to, you know, loud records, I was signed to loud records. I signed to Steve Rifkin. Loud and Chris was managing me. Um, one day, Steve's brother, who was cool, you know, called me into the office. He's like, "Yo, you know your album ain't coming around, right? You know, you know this loud whole shit is going under." I didn't know that, you know. Um, so things didn't necessarily pan out. I could have stayed with Chris or whatever, but I had Eminem and Paul Rosenberg telling me they wanted to sign me. You know, we had the meetings, we discussed the details. I had Jay Z telling me he wanted to sign me, so I wanted to get away from Chris. You know, um, not just yet, but I was working very hard with Chris, giving him everything, you know, all that. And I remember towards the end, and God bless the dead, I have no regrets, and I'm so thankful, because if it wasn't for Chris, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Mm. Um, I just remember, I remember that time when, when, when I went into the studio, uh, I come into the, uh, to the office, and Chris is like, give me a record, I'm going to bring it to a certain DJ. I'm like, all right, cool. I knew he went to go see the DJ, and then I'm listening, and I hear him play the Bubba Sparks record. Shout out Bubba Sparks, that's my man. So I'm like, what the fuck's going on? I didn't hear my record. I'm like, and they'd be like, yo, that's a white boy, Joe. I'm like, really? I'm like, damn, man. I'm like, they're like, he's with Missy. Missy's someone that's in the family, you know, Missy and, and then, you know, signed a violator. So I've been around Missy a million times, like family, you know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, why would they do this? I'm like, what's going on here? I go to the violator office, I see all the Bubba Sparks pictures hanging up. I'm already in the source. somewhere. I already did the BT, I'm double XL. I got the shit rocking on every mixtape. We, we moving. I'm, I'm feeling myself. I should have. You know, sometimes you gotta listen, bro. You know what I mean? You don't know it all, you know what I mean? I'm listening to Jay, I'm listening to Eminem and Paul and all them, and I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm like, I don't need this, man. I don't need this, bro. I wanna get out of this. He was like, nah, bro, you're crazy, you know what I mean? This, hang in there, bro, just wait, Joe, just wait. I was impatient, you know? I'm running around doing all the things that, you know, I could only dream of every day, and I, I was impatient, bro. I wanted to get away. I, I fought my way out. Um, he let me out. Uh, I, remember, I remember how all the conversations went. It was no hard feelings, and, and um, then as soon as I get out, all the people that were saying, come on, come on, when I ran to them, they had reasons why they couldn't do it. So, so, so you I, got so, that blackballed them? I, nah, I don't want to say I was blackballed. I didn't move the right way. 
Mm. Everything that goes on in your life is your responsibility. Absolutely. Bro. It's yeah, like yeah, that yeah. ripple effect. People yeah, feel to yeah. realize you take that rock and throw it in the water. You did it. Chris never did nothing to me or for me other than make me, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a very well-known name in hip-hop culture, mm. you know, and, and in the streets and stuff like that. So I'm thankful for that whole situation. Going back and, and how I could give it artist advice right now, and, and I know it's a lot different right now, but don't act on impulse. You know what I mean? Don't act on impulse. I and think like, things through, right? Think, always think things through, man. And, and if you're blessed enough to be around somebody uh, of the likes of Chris Lighty, who, in my opinion, is the most legendary man ever in the whole entire hip-hop industry, um, you know, uh, you should listen. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, but Jay-Z was the man. You know, you know, Eminem was the man. You know, these people, come on, come on, come on. You know, but uh, no regrets, man. Been independent ever since, doing what I got to do. Did a few deals after that, you know what I mean, that didn't pan out, but, you know, whatever is hold the pockets, all that other stuff, you know, some more experience or whatever the case is. Uh, but now I'm just like most of these other artists, independent, just doing what I'm doing. So now the reflection back upon it was you were a kid and you st started this uh, this journey and this vision, what, age 10, 11, 12? Yeah, yeah, I wanted to do this. I started writing rhymes at, you know, 10, 11. What would you, what would you suggest to that person back then besides what you said, you know, think things through? Did you see what you, where you're at right now and how that would pan out? At the, I mean, obviously, it's a young age. No, what, not what, no, no. I was sure and focused and, and, and you know, thinking, yo, I'm going to be this and I'm going to be that. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, this is, it's a business, bro. It's not a dream. You know what I mean? And in business, there's people involved, there's players and, and, there's, and, there's, and there's people and, and there's protocol and there's things that go on and you have to understand that. And that don't got nothing to do with talent. That don't got nothing to do with hunger or, um, you know, uh, college in, degree. In, in, impulse or a college degree, none of that. You know, it's, it, they call it a rap game for a reason because you got to play it. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you act off impulse. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of rappers. I don't got to mention no names. There's a lot of rappers that ain't here no more because they acting on impulse. There's rappers that are not, not free no more because they acting on impulse. There's rappers that are just no one wants to listen to no more because they said something off impulse or did something off impulse. You know, uh, there's always a, a reaction to any one of your actions. You know what I mean? And now all these years later, I still love this the same way I did as I was a little kid. I still, I don't, I don't write the same no more because it kind of just, now it just, just happens, bro. You know what I mean? But uh, it's just an all day thing. I freestyle all day long. Could be in the shower, could be over here, could be, there. everything is a rap. Every last little thing is, is a rap, you know what I mean? So I still love this more than anything in the world. But sometimes I sit there and say to myself, damn, I loved one thing and dedicated every drop of energy I had to one thing my whole life. Imagine if I would've did something else. A lot, you know, you'll see a lot of your friends when you turn 35, 36 years old, they start retiring. With three quarters pay and all that, you know, they might have been getting paid 90000 a year. You know, my man was getting 162 legendary correction officer. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he retired with three quarters. His hair is still black. His beard is black. He could still, you know, bag a 25-year-old bitch. He don't want them, but it, it would be nothing for him. You know what I mean? And he's retired. And now he's, you know, he want to bartend over here for 1000 a night. He's got a home improvement business. He's making, you know, 20000 This is 5000 6000 He's doing it. You know, so putting all your eggs in one basket... It's something that I'd probably do over and over again, but I wish I could have taught myself not to do that. You know, but then at the same time, you know, um, the guy who was, who was talking to Michael Jordan and really inspiring him told him, you put all your motherfucking eggs in this basket. You know what I'm saying? And go with it. Yeah, and go with it. You know, but the thing is, is, at a certain age, that's when all the eggs in one basket thing is cool. As you get older, responsibilities come. There's things you can't run from, bro. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and when, you have, when you have a child or, you know, I never gave a fuck about nothing. If there wasn't handcuffs and my, and my parents are okay and everybody's all right, I don't give a fuck. I, don't, I, don't, I literally don't care. I don't worry. In fact, I, I didn't even start aging until recently because it gets to the point where it's like the bills, bro, they just keep coming. They keep, and they get higher and higher and crazier and crazier and it gets nuts. And, you know, and, you, and, and a guy like me, I don't just rap and sit there waiting for handouts. I invest in myself, bro. You know, um, of course, to play this game, to really invest in yourself, you know, you got to shoot a two hundred fifty thousand dollar nut. But shit, I'll do what I got to do. Five hundred at a time, a thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand, my whole life. You know, even even if I have a, a month where I say, "Damn, man, I'm struggling financially," I still went to the studio for five hundred hours seventeen times that month. <laughs> you know so, what I mean? So what is that? You know? Right. But then you got to say, as a businessman, you got to say, "Okay, well, I spent this, did I make that back?" Thank God I make that back in features. Thank God I make that back in, in digital sales and streams and stuff like that. And and, 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 and certain other things, um, TV and film placements and shit like that. But, um, but I'm not content, nah, not, not even close. You know, the mission for me when I got on was to, was to be the greatest rapper, bro. And now I realize at this point, the mission is not. The mission is to just leave my mark, do what I gotta do, 
make some serious money. You know, the play for me was never, you know, oh, I just happen to have lyrics. But what a lot of people don't know about me is when I first was shopping to the labels, we had, you know, hit records, joints that are, you know, the, the big sounding records, like real good records. And, and even now, you know, all my shit is music. You know, there comes a point where you got to look around and say, all right, I'm not a 17-year-old gang member. Right. You know what I'm saying? My music don't fill jails with, with young black males. My music don't make them kill each other. My music don't make them do this and that. My music don't, don't um, it, it couldn't even if it tried, feed um, genocide. You know what I mean? So, so I don't fit into what's going on. But I'm no dummy, bro. Like, before I liked hip-hop, I liked music. You know what I mean? Um, you know, shit, if you ask me which record I like, take on me, take on me. Or Nas, if I rule the world, I'd probably say take on me from the 80s. Because although I love Nas, I'd be jumping around like a, like a, like a soccer mom when that shit comes on in the house. <laughs> Cleaning, singing, and all that. I love that. But what if I make a record that's infectious like that? I don't got to do it like that. You know what I'm saying? Something infectious like that. I look at a lot of other guys, you know, um, where age doesn't matter, where things don't matter, is when you make records that are for the world. You know what I mean? If you allow them to, to put you in a box, I will never let no one tell me what to do or tell me what I can't do. But then there comes a point where, guess what? If I want to be a fireman right now... I'm going to be a fireman. No, I can't. Because you're dedicated. No, because I'm not 35 years old. I'm older than 35. Oh, you're mm. older than 35? You're no good. I don't care if you can carry a thousand fat bitches up a, a, up a ladder. You know what I mean? You're no good. You're over 35, you're no good. I don't care how strong you are, how much energy you got. You can't be a fine man. Beat it. So it comes, to a, it comes to a point where you got to realize, you know, you're going to have to do it your way. You have to do it smart. You know, and all my favorite people, all my favorite um, artists and all my favorite entertainers and all my favorite gangsters and individuals and hardworking people, just people that stand out and go above and beyond, they tell me, yo, you've been comfortable all these years. You're very comfortable in that zone that you're in. Even, I'm not talking about financially, I'm talking about just you're comfortable doing what you're doing. It happens for you when you put yourself in an uncomfortable situation. We find out how tough you are really when someone is beating the living shit out of you. How much could you take? What are you gonna do to turn that table? Are you gonna win this? Or are you, you, either way, you won, you know what I'm saying? But, but that's what it's really all about. So right now, musically, what I'm doing is putting myself in a zone where I'm not so comfortable. I wanna be uncomfortable and see what comes out of that. Because some of our favorite artists, favorite, uh, favorite right artists, there. favorite entertainers, sport athletes, whatever the case, fighters, they all come from discomfort. You know what I mean? So it's kind of crazy. It's like the same thing with hip hop. Like when I first started doing this, I said, you know, let me put myself in an uncomfortable situation. I could have kept playing wiffle ball and throwing rocks at the school window where I live at. Now I got to get jumped by 15 kids at the lake just to hang out. I was drinking 40s and this, this was happening, that happened, a gunshot going up in the boat. Wow, I mean, listen, bro, I don't got to tell you all the shit I've seen hanging out. You know what I mean? I've been right next to it, I've been involved with it, it gets crazy. But, but I put myself in an uncomfortable situation, and from that came a lot of great things. But now we're on that train for a long time, bro. Doing the mm -hmm. same thing over and over again, expecting a different response. You know, they call that being crazy. You know what I mean? So Expecting um, different results. <laughs> yeah, and all those successes is, is, is just a word, and it's a mind state. You know what I mean? It doesn't have anything to do with financial. That's what people that are not doing so financially, they came up with that. And a lot of these young artists are dope, but uh, it just ain't the same, bro. Definitely, definitely different. Yeah, you know, I don't know, man. I feel like I was raised by a lot of rappers back in the days. You know, let's just listen to their music. You know, Snoop told you, you know, uh, bitches ain't shit. You know, I opened the door, look what I saw. It was my little cousin Daz, and he was fucking my hoe. I uncocked my shit. I'm heartbroken, but I'm still loke, man. Fuck a bitch. That made me realize that any girl that does anything to me or whatever to try to, I don't care if she's fucking my best friend. I'll leave them, man, get out of here. I don't care. I can get a thousand more. I was raised by rappers back in the days. Now, if you go listen to what these rappers say, it ain't really the same, man. There's not too much knowledge being passed around, not too much information, enlightenment. It's more just wilding out. And I really can't blame nobody because, really, who the fuck wants to sit around and think now, bro? People want to have a good time. Absolutely. People want to have a good time. They don't want to use their brains. Yeah, and at the same time, you know, um, you know the rappers from, from our era and shit like that, they really didn't feed the agenda you know, so well. They, they did enough, but, but uh, they wouldn't let the record labels take advantage of them. You know the stories. You know how it went. Absolutely. All the rappers, you know, that were complaining, yo, they trying to make us do this. We ain't going to do that. We ain't going to do this. All right. But you see what happens. The labels figured out that they were worth more money dead. You know what I mean? So, and that's still happening now. You know what I mean? So I see, I did a little research, you know what I mean? I see you got some ties over in Rochester. Yeah, I got ties in Rochester. Yeah, shout out my man Ito. Okay. You know I mean, yeah, I'll go out there. I just went out there recently. Shout out Black Jesus. Shout out my man, uh, you know, WAP. Um, went out there and I got the Pelly Pens. Pelly Drops, the Pelly Carts, you know, my own TAC products. Shout out Nine South Vapes, my man Riz. Uh, went out there, we did our thing, man. Had the products out there in the stores. 
uh, made some moves, and more importantly, you know, just cooled out with Ito, man. Ito is, uh, Ito, yeah, shout out Ua. Yo, Ito is, Ito is special, bro. I know a lot of rappers that 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 that, that tell me they love me. Yeah, yeah, we, we family and all that. I don't know, man. I got I got I got some real serious family treatment from Ito, man. Mm. You know what I mean? And I'm I'm gonna return that. Ito Ito's different. He, he's yeah, he's special, man. Yeah, he's special. How'd you guys? Uh, we just linked up. Paths. You know, my man Ray the Ruckus just keep telling me, listen to Ito, listen to Ito, listen to Ito. I'm listening. I, I knew I could tell a Spanish rapper when I hear it. I knew he was Spanish. You know, he was saying it's just the way that they how they do it. Pronunciation. You know? He wasn't talking about. Cracking collarbones or vernaculars or anything like that, you know what I mean? Or <laughs> larynx, I slice a larynx. He wasn't doing none of that. I just could tell, you know what I mean? And he would say like, he would say he he likes to drop gems like he's your uncle. He got a lot of uncle gems in there, you know what I mean? So I liked him right off the rip when I heard him. Then I went and did, you know, I re, you know, reached out. Yo, Ito, I love your shit. Yo, Joe, yo, what up, yo? I've been listening. I grew up. You're one of my favorite. Yo, let's get up. You know, this kid spent a lot of money, man. He came out. You know, it, it was like a five thousand dollar trip. Came out out of nowhere, came out to Staten Island, stayed out here. We went in the studio, buried ourselves in the work, you know, and had a good time, man. You know what I mean? And then in return, I turned around and went back out there. You know, we had a great time. We got a lot of music done. Uh, you've been doing a lot of promoting and stuff, right? Promoting? Yeah. I mean, I promote myself every day, you know. So what, what gives you that spark to keep continuously doing that? I love the music, bro. You I just love, love and, it. And, where yeah, I love the music and I love to inspire people even more. Mm, if the music can inspire people, that's cool. But if I could say something now, you know, some of the things that Tupac said that inspired people the most were things that he said outside of the studio, things that he said in interviews. Mm. I like to inspire people. If I could leave this interview, you know, if I could leave this interview and somebody here just hear one thing, oh, let me not act off impulse. I might stop somebody from, well, I said Snoop Dogg said a young cock, this shit, he's heartbroken, but he's still low. Someone might watch this, catch his girl cheating, he might want to kill them both. He might say fucking and go get head from somebody else that night. Mm. So as long as I can help somebody, I'm here to inspire, bro. That's I it. mean, that's the whole purpose right here behind yeah. this podcast. Yeah, of course, man. That's what it is. I mean, all everything I do is to inspire, bro. I don't, I, I'm not a selfish person. I've never been all about, you know, Delph, all that other shit. I just, I do this to inspire people, man. And not just inspire the younger people, inspire older people. People might inspire people, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's your take on the dictionary? I mean, I never sat and wrote rhymes with one. I really don't respect. Did you that. ever? Did you ever go back and study words or? Nah, nah. I just I, I got I got a I'm a Virgo. I got OCD. I hear C shit and patterns and all that, and I just start putting all sorts of knucklehead shit together. I don't <laughs> forget words and all that. You know, I, I my father was was telling me about this word. Uh, uh, it's as, it's I mean, shit got worse. And I was trying to run with that word yesterday. I kept fucking it up or whatever, which makes me proud. It makes me feel more like a rapper when I fuck words up. I laugh at myself, but I'm like, you know, and I, I, I don't, rappers that sit there with the dictionary, Indian style, writing their raps, it's corny, man. I don't even like them. <laughs> I don't care about your words and your bars and all that. My whole thing is like, yo, if I don't fuck with the man behind the music, I definitely don't fuck with the music behind the man. So you could be the most dead nice guy in the world. If, if I personally, you're not my cup of tea, I don't care about your bars. When people are like, yo, he's nice. I don't agree. I'm not a hater. You know, You're gonna tell them what it is. Yeah, I, don't I don't even say nothing. It. I learned that's another thing, especially nowadays. Keep your shit to yourself, man. You make a comment and, you, and then you're punished on Instagram. You know what I mean? You, you, you know, shit like that. I just keep it to myself, man. Especially nowadays, everybody's so sensitive and all that. You know, so there's so many rules that can protect them. Bro. Yeah, and I don't really care about the rules. I just stick to my. I stick to what I do. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying. You got some nice work there. Thanks, bro. Yeah. I got all, all local? All over me. Yeah, local work. Shout out my man Payne. Rest in peace to him. He passed away after doing this piece. Um, yeah, I'm going to get a whole bunch more, too, man. Nice. I, I, like, I like ink and shit like that. Yeah. If somebody were to come through Staten Island here, what would you, where, where would you suggest for them to go through and eat? Depends on who they are. They want some nice soul food. They want some soul food? There's some spots on Bay Street, man. Um, but the thing is, is a lot of these spots, they open and close quick. I mean, they open up, you know, some, some, some Yeah, I realize that. Jail. Every tra- nice <laughs> every business. every trip I come down there. Yeah, they want to open a nice business. You know, they just came home or something. They give it a shot. and They trip and fall. And it's hard, man. There, there used to be a, a bunch of spots on Staten Island. I can't even really tell you right now. There was one on the corner by Victory across from where Wu Wei used to be. Um, but I went in there. I ain't going to front. The food was delicious, but I ordered the wrong thing, man. I got fish on white bread, and that shit was all stuck together and burnt the whole roof of my mouth. I was like, fuck this. Mm. I know never why they never it, again. I know why they call it soul food. That shit burnt my soul in the, in the first bite. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but as far as soul food, you know, I got a lot of stuff on the North Shore. You know what I mean? But, yeah, you know, like I said, different strokes for different folks. You know what I mean? If it's in the, if some Italian guy comes out here and says, yo, Joe, man, show me where it's at. You know, I, I don't know if I'm going to take him up for fish and chips. You know what I'm saying? You know, people, everybody like their own different stuff, you know. How do you feel you're, you're viewed in the, the, the public's eye around here? 
In terms of what? Just you, your personality, you as a person, as a rapper. Oh, I'm, you know, I've been calling myself the friendly neighborhood Pelly for years because I'm always there to lend a helping hand, whatever, no matter how serious or light it is. You know, I got a lot of love, bro. I drive through my neighborhood. The kids jump on the side of my truck and all that. Nice. I got a lot of love, bro. Um, you know, I got a lot of love with the females. You know, I got a lot of love from the gangsters, on Italian dudes and the dudes in the hood. And I also got haters, you know, and a lot of that comes from base behind the females and base behind the fact that I'm still doing what makes me happy at this age while other people are retired and not happy, they're married and not happy, kids are not happy, you know, and, and they watch and they see a guy like me who's so carefree, just keep going. You know, I rub a few people the wrong way, but, you know, it's all intentional, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I, if I rub you the wrong way, I'm glad I did, you know, but <laughs> you know, just like if I can inspire someone, I'm glad, you know, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. I used to go by that. I used to always say, if I get the hater today, I did something good. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I hear I hear with the rap shit, a lot of people use the word legend. That's always nice. You know, that kind of freaks me out a little bit, especially one day Cool G Rap was, was calling me that, and I was blown away. I mean, Cool G Rap's my man for a long time. We, we're very close. But one day we had that conversation, and he hit me, and he was telling me, yo, Joe, you're a legend. And I was wilding when he was telling me that. You know, people throw that word around real lightly now. You know, oh, he's a legend, he's a legend. I don't know, I felt like after a while, it started to suit me well. I get called that a lot. It's a nice feeling. But when someone like Cool G Rap, you know, calls me that, you know, and I asked him, I said, G Rap, you're a legend, bro. All the stuff that you did, this and that. He said, now, fuck that, man. I said, what will make me a legend to a guy like you? Because you, you, your shit blows me away, Joe. I've been watching you for years. It's just legendary to me, bro. You're a legend because I said you are. All right, cool. So he asked me how people view me. I guess in hip-hop, a lot of people use that word. I go hard, bro. When it's time to rhyme on one of these freestyles or it's time to rhyme or spit or whatever, I'm, I'm knocking someone's head off, bro. I'm not just saying some shit or, you know, getting through it or whatever the case. I'm trying to, like, turn it up more than everybody there, you know what I mean? When the time is right. You know, so maybe that's why people, you know, revere me as that, you know. But I work hard, bro. I work very hard for that. What the fuck else did I do? You know what I mean? So outside of rap, who would you say your biggest mentor in the business aspect of learning what you had to do conduct, to, to conduct yourself in this industry would have been? Or is outside of rap, looking at a business aspect. Uh, what do you mean? Like who? who, who where did else? you get? Your, where did you get your most information from to learn what you had to do? From mistakes. Yes. Yeah. I would do everything wrong and do it over and over again. And my mother would warn me every single time, "Don't do this," and I would do it anyway. You know. Um, still now. Still now. Mm. I, mean, I, I just learned now. You know, to damn near always walk away if someone wants to argue or something like that. And, I mean, I'm only entertaining the guy who's just who wants to really do something. You know, I'm not even going to stand there and argue with nobody, or uh, I'm not going to voice my opinion on Instagram about nothing I see. Little things that you learn. Yeah, you know, those are little things, for example. You know, don't rush into anything. Um, you know, friends and money, tough one. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people change. That's one right there. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. You know, when I look around me and I see how people behave, I try to do the opposite. When I see how guys behave coming up, how they all sweat the girls and the girls can get the guys to do anything, I said, damn, man, let me try to do the opposite. Do the opposite, it drives the girls crazy. That worked. You know, I, I try to do the opposite. You know, I, I got a lot of gangster friends and I catch myself doing gangster shit that they don't even do, man, in scenarios. You know, uh, you know, uh, might be a gangster guy who says, I hate rats, I hate rats. Yeah, he might have a, uh, a girl or something that was running around the street doing crime too that put him in jail or whatever, but he's still going to go over there and have sex with her. Not me, bro. I don't, I don't fuck rats. I don't hang out with them. I don't talk to them. It's just a little example right there. You know, I know a few gangsters that are having sex with rats. You know what I mean? Um, probably better off having a conversation with one than having sex with one. But uh, that's my So their heads are confused. Clearly. A lot, a lot of people, you know, claim that there's something that they're really not. You know, they keep slipping up and keep making the same mistake over and over again. Not everything's about being gangster, right? But who, genuine. Who, who says that they live more by the code than a gangster? Oh, I live by the codes. All right. Watch half of these guys, bro. Watch every guy, especially, especially like where I'm at. It changed, bro. It ain't the same no more. That whole mafia thing and all that. It's not the same. It definitely, you know what I mean? I even look at it, you know what I mean? The difference in separation from, from religion to religion and, and from human to human, you know what I mean? They can't even gain unity there. So it's not, right, right. everything's falling apart. Right, right. And, you know, not to say that being a criminal or a gangster is a good thing and glorify that, you know, but, you know, they're, they're the guys that supposedly live by codes. You know, I think, we, I think, I think that there are codes in life. A lot of those street codes actually, you know, they, they carry weight into regular life. Shouldn't be a tattletale, right? That's what, a, that's, what a, that's what you'd be if you're not a rat. You know, it'd be a kid, it'd be a tattletale. Tattletale get you beat up. Tattletale and maybe get someone, uh, you know, hurt, you know. You, know you, you never know what it is, you know. You just keep your mouth shut. It's just that's not a good thing to do. You know, in the street, they take it to the next level. They want to kill you for it and all this other stuff. But, uh, but there's a lot of, you know, we should live by codes, man. 
You know, we really should, a lot of us. And, and I, try to, uh, I try to do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. I do. I'd rather just be the guy that stands out. You know what I mean? And it feels good because from that standpoint, you see things a lot differently. Is there any other business that you'd like to shout out that you may have or that, you know what I mean, that you, you want you other know, people got, to support? I, I got the Pelly Pens, you know, coming soon to a city near you. I got the drops. I got, I got, I put out, I put out the vintage album in January. Go get that vintage album. Um, Met the man on there. Uh, that's the only feature on that one. I put the Hitman for Hire V2 out. That got Conway. That got uh, Nems. That got RJ Payne. That got Shaheem. That got uh, Ghostface and Raekwon. That got, I got a lot of shit on there. Um, and I got new music coming, man. I got the Pella Freestyles out, you know, www.jojopellegrino.com. You can follow me on Instagram, Jojo Pellegrino. Um, yeah, bro. You know, I got a lot of new music coming, man. I might have to try that THC and put it in my shop. Yeah, whatever you want to <laughs> do, bro. It's, it's, it's the best, bro. I know everybody says that. It is, man. You can look up my man Riz, Nine South Vapes. You know, our distillant is destroying other people's distillant. Mm. Come to find out none of these people. This one guy was arguing with me. This guy's a distillant pro. The guy was an idiot. He didn't know nothing. He's sitting there telling me, these pens are empty. These pens are empty. All right, crack it open. They crack it open, the liquid comes out, and it starts changing color in front of their face. Yeah, that's the clear. You don't know about that up here. That's the clear distillant that hasn't even touched oxygen yet, so it's not even oxidized. It's, it's white and pink. It's the strongest, most sought after, highest percentage as you can get. <laughs> and you don't even think it's in there? You and your distillant pro, you dummy, you just destroyed a pen. You know what I mean? No, it's not hitting right. I got to suck on it like a McDonald's milkshake. All right. <laughs> Whatever the case is, because, because my bit. shit is, is like taffy in there. It's not, it's not vegetable oil and all that just resting on the coil. You might got to pull on that for a minute. Hold it in your hand tight for a second so it warms up and hits the coil. But our shit is fire, bro. And, you know, Liquid Gummies, um, we, you know, did some stuff with them. Shout out my man from Liquid Gummies. You guys can look them up. He's got the most potent gummies out there. And, you know, we, you know, we, we dealt with him and we got the Pelly Drops. And we just rocking, bro, putting them, you know, in a city uh, near you, man. One city at a time. Every city I go to, I do it. But... I give a lot out to the fans and shit like that. And then I say, damn, man, now I, nah, I need more for the stores. But I'm doing that. And, uh, you know, I'm just working with the music. Shout out my man Gabby. We're working together, getting ready to, you know, do something different with the music. Got some good, good I'm not going to sit around putting out underground album after underground. What the fuck are we doing, man? I, you know, I got this album that's like, you know, exposing everything going on in the world. I want to change the world. What the fuck would I do that for, man? Everyone loves it. It's the best thing I ever heard. I'm going to put it out. Everyone's going to be mad at me. Be, oh, that's what he does. Well, he's, he's, he did too much of this. Might as well just get to the music. This is the music business, man. Absolutely. Might as well make music. But you guys stay tuned because this man just got to yeah. bet you. You got to see it. Oh, yeah, yeah. You already know. Yeah, you like know you know what's up already, man. But stay tuned because I got a lot more going on. JJP, Jojo Pellegrino, I appreciate you having me come through. Listen, we really appreciate you taking your time out. You know Thank what I mean? You, Especially you, your lifestyle and everything. Yeah, I mean, I gave a little bit. You know, I want to let you guys get to know me if you didn't know too much already. You know, shout out my man Lions Law, too, the Boomer. Absolutely. You Boom! I mean? Yeah, shout out the Boomer, you know. That's what you, you, you know, uh, you, you, heard, you, know that, you heard that, you heard that pinball, yeah, right? I was going to say he got the pinball joint yeah, out, you know what I mean? DJ yeah, M80 on that beat yeah, right shout there. shout out M80, M80, yeah. I seen your message on the gram, I got you, bro. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, man, you know, my brothers, they do music, and, and I just try to add my two cents when I see them. That's going to be out when you start to push it, right? Yeah, of course, all right. You know, you could do this, you could do that, you know. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do that, bro. I don't, I don't, I, if I know something and I can help out in any way, I try. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And me and Lounge, we go way back. He's been around since, uh. Lounge was there when we brought him in to Staten Island. He was right there. Mm. He seen it. Yeah, he seen it. Matter of fact, it's kind of crazy. I'll just tell a real quick story. It's, yeah. got, it's got Lounge in it. Uh, when, when we brought M out to Staten Island, you know, Stretch and them were like, yo, come on, you know, come through the back. We went through the back. We were hanging out, kicking it, because me and Stretch are like family. Um, we out there doing our thing, and, you know, uh, everybody from the hood came through that night. Everyone's telling me, yo, this dude ain't shit, bro. He can't fuck with you, blah, blah. He, he a clown. Look at this kid. Ah. We didn't hear nothing. We didn't know what the hell was going on. We heard a very little bit. He went on the stage. The first thing he did was, you know, nurse, scalpel, this, that. Lounge was standing in front of the stage. I was standing 15, 20 feet back. He was in front of me, like right in front of me. That motherfucker said, these are the results of a thousand electric bolts. We're losing them, nurse. Check the pulse. The snotty kid knows and respect, refused to respect the dolls. And I remember Lounge just, Lounge, he turned around. He went like this. And he looked at me like that. I said, wow, this kid's the real deal. That was it. I never up, up up until then. I never seen another. I hate I hate the word white boy. I don't even like those words, man. But I never seen another <laughs> Anglo-Saxon rapper, or whatever. But <laughs> never seen another. Never seen another. You know, uh, never seen another a white boy really have it. Mm. A lot of them, you know, think they got it. You know, what I'm saying. But I was, you know, come on, bro. Rapping is not enough. You know what I mean? You you, you got to knock somebody out their shoes and socks. Yeah, you I always see that. these dudes talking about white rappers. I'm like, yo, you dudes are bugging, man. These dudes is whatever. I'm still only one that ever made yeah, this. Yeah, but listen, wow, there's, there's a difference. Was Eminem? 
there's a difference. Like, you know, I mean? you can tell the settings that you've been raised in. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You speak about it. Yeah. And, you know, it's, yeah. it, it, it's, it clearly states that there's... I know where you come from. Yeah, it, it, it took us four balls to realize that this wasn't going to go away. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that, and that was dope, man. So, yeah, so shout out to Lounge. Shout out, shout out to Boomer. Shout out to Lounge Low. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep, yep, yep. Like I said, we're going to close this up here. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time out. Thanks a lot, bro. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Thanks Thank for having you. me, man. Yep. All right. Yo, boy, Pelly, he just moved like a dawn. The streets, they rule for me hard, cause I'm deeply rooted and strong. Sneakers Louis Vuitton, but my tea is Gucci and suave. Snatch your bitch from under your arm before you even knew she was gone. Came as ugly, save your money like a Hebrew do till it's long. Your rap is weak, bon appetit, I'ma eat your food till you starve. Push the dirt like a dump truck, cushions burn as it come sluts. Dimes are dicks from down till they pussy hurt and got numb guts. I bust once, separate your soul from body, stick kick. Like a no karate, gun you down like cast. The land on old Bilotti, packing me, me packing district, twist it and roll a Gotti, chrome me on me, bag every smoking hottie that's strolling by me. I grew up where they told you copies, but socialized the smoky lobbies with guys known for bodies and shooters blowing Bobby. Learn my trade in public housing, 23 million dollar deal, couple hundred thousand. While I run around with all my favorite rappers and gangsters, see money bags the big meats. I be with Hov and Baseline and Nas and John Lennon sweet, and these is my sessions. All top legends would take a gander. Young brazen alpha, new favorite rapper who cadence capture. Ran a thieving cons who contracts designed right to take your masters. Read between the lines, a small black and white like a baby panda. BIBs for mines, I talk rather spicy, got crazy swagger. Chicks love me like Conor McGregor, set for him to reign a champion. Huh. I'm not the one, get my name from your pussy tongue. Them blues make you brave till I bring you pain that you couldn't numb. Fuck a punchline, I got a hook for little fake rappers that'll put them on his ass quicker than a milk crate challenge. I don't look at snitches. The haters, I'm a crook, a villain, a gangster, banging out to my bank account, pushing millies like Jada, slacks and loafers, cigar smoke, passionate focus, mind woke, gifted and grateful, thankful for random moments that God spoke. I line bums and murk them later, live like the Terminator. Test Joe, my techno, it's time for the percolator. <laughs> this the real thing, these guys is impersonators, liars and perpetrators, tires disturb the neighbors, shots hit your earth, your slayers, lay you out like the letter T, take my respect, fresh, chains on my neck like a Mr. T. Shake up the set, yes. Faces of death when I spit the heat. Gunshot, mo fire, rewind, press repeat. It takes a minute, amazing with it. I stay committed, eat it, shit it, breathe it, think it, sleep it, live it, slaved and bled it. Sure, I got gunners playing the field for me. A, forget it, but I hold me down, so I'ma take the credit. Hustle till you double or that cake you flipping. Paradise slums, we send the place through FedEx, straight to business. Fucking hate the feelings. Sucker this, Joe, my hand will break these misfits. Covered in gold like Sammy Davis fingers made a difference. They saying legend. Legend, 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 legend.